So hi, I'm Michael. I used to work at Designs Republic and now I run a studio called Build. Hi, I'm David. Uh, I, I was a designer at the Designers Republic. I then set up a studio called Kiosk and right now I'm the creative director for BBC's Global Experience Language. Uh, hi, I'm Ian. I started the Designers Republic 30 years ago and I'm still here. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm creative director of Human and for a long time I worked at the Designers Republic. Hi, I'm Matt. I worked at Designers Republic and now I'm the founder of Universal Everything. Uh, for me, it was just about the record sleeve. So it's about the, 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 the bands that I used to really like, um, like the Poppies, for instance, that you know you kind of buy, and then it's like, all right, these guys do this, and that's what I was really excited. And what going through college, that's all I wanted to do is record sleeve design. So really, Designs Republic was one of those um, relative few big, well, not big, big names, but not big studios, but big names doing really interesting stuff within music. Um, so for me, it was just a um, yeah, just the, the, that kind of, they were doing the really interesting stuff at the time. I think, I mean, for me, I think um, I found it exciting because, uh, you know, I, I grew up around here and to have a company somewhere in, in the place where I grew up that was actually doing something that was having a national and international impact for me was just amazing, you know. So I think that, that for me, that was... Uh, a big draw and, and, and I saw it as being really important and uh, it was part of my kind of goal to maybe have a, a, a career that was actually exciting you know and do something that I wanted to do and maybe even get paid for it you know so I think that's why that for me was the big draw that there was a, a company in locally doing stuff like that. Yeah. So basically, you have to travel that far to basically, get a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to get two, two buses. Yeah, yeah. Two buses. Yeah, two buses. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm a southerner and I've been up here for 20 years, and I guess what attracted me was the music, just being a huge fan of Walk Records and my brother being involved in it and all that. And then obviously picking up the sleeves, reading the small print, and realising that it was all the world of Designs Republic and got into it through that, really. RS Records, Walk Records, all that. And so. I think that's the thread, is the music. Yeah, really, I, just, isn't it? I think it's the same thing. I was, yeah. hmm. I was, I was a skateboarder and was around the Sheffield scene, but I'd loved bought records. They've been always kind of present for me and loved all that stuff. And then I got to know Ian and these guys and joined in. But it was definitely the attract the music industry stuff that was was exciting because it was. Yeah, you know, we had blank canvases to fill in and be artistic. Yeah, which was wonderful. I, I see. I think that it is the, the music is the common theme, but at the time, it, it, it's it was it was a different time to how it is now, in terms of the music industry. And so the music industry, you could, it was a playground, and so you know the it, the music that the music that we designed for and the people we work with, I think, is, is a common factor for all five of us. And, and you know why people might have come, but I think that it also it, it gave you gave us a huge amount of freedom mm -hmm. to do what we wanted, and and I think that I, I I was always surprised that a lot of other studios didn't do that. But I think mm -hmm. following on from when you asked about the ethos, the ethos was that this is if you come to Design as your public, you come for a particular reason, and we're going and, and we will give you the design that, that we think that you need, mm -hmm. you know. And so that, so there was a, a, a large amount of autonomy, and that's why it's kind of fun and. You know, we kind of went out together and things, and mm. so it was, it was you know, like designers hunting in packs. You know, but but I think I think so. The music is the, is an important thing, but I think it's also the fact that kind of we right from the beginning, um, purely because as I said, we didn't set up a design studio to as a career. It was always about doing what we wanted to do. We created a lot of space, and we created a, a, a kind of. A, a general sort of sensibility that people that came to us expected us to do what we were going to do rather than trying to direct us. I think the other thing that I noticed when I joined was most design studios just design something and keep fairly quiet about it but it was very much like a, almost a broadcaster the way it just emitted so much stuff beyond the work for clients and bands and stuff and just the amount that was peripheral stuff which kind of built the world around it you know the way kind of we kind of put credits everywhere yeah. and it just turned into a kind of a 
But I, I, brand I, association, so a band would align themselves to the Zaza Republic, and you get this kind of into. I wonder how much it is to do with the fact that you know I didn't study design in terms of I, I'd managed bands and the things that I'd done, and actually all we did with the Zaza Republic was we promoted it and talked about it in the press mm. as if we were a band. Yeah. Not definitely. pretending to be a band, but it, but but you know we we were always more interested in what we were doing. Than, other, than, than what somebody else was doing. And if people would say, what, kind of, what, other, what other designers you know, do, do you like? It, it, there was a genuine sort of kind of blankness because, mm. we, because, we, because we worked and we went out together and we, you know, and, and we were in Sheffield away from mm. you know, a lot of other sort of media industry. I think it did work like a band. Yeah. I think that's mm. how it was set up. And that's what I say, what I do now is it's, I always think of it like, what would a band do? You know? and, yeah. and it's that sense that in a way, each of us, the way we worked, it, we were all kind of operating under that band name that individual yeah. kind of musicians all feeding into like this one. And it was very of, different to what the traditional studio was because we would we would have autonomy with our clients, each of us as well. We would we would yeah. have client facing skills from the day one. We had to sort of as mm. I came into the studio thinking this is what all design studios are like, but it really wasn't. It was yeah. just that, you know, you're doing this now, go and speak to them. Yeah. And that was like a sink or swim moment, and yeah. it was quite daunting at first. But it was, um, but it was wonderful, and it gave us a lot of skills, I think, each of us mm. to be able to sort of really harness a lot of mm. it's hidden talents we didn't realise we had until we were in that situation. I think mm. Ian gave us a lot of freedom in that respect, and mm. therefore got a lot out of us. Mm. And like Matt said, the, 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 our output around that, that period of time was quite prolific, I think. The funny thing I always think is how much we all used to spend talking to each other and joking, but we were still really prolific. Do you know what I mean? Like, we were all busy working, mm. but it wasn't like sat in silence all day, every day. Mm. It was nuts, really. Mm. But, but we still were sat in loud music. <laughs> 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 yeah. Chatting away, no one could hear you. Cause it <laughs> I mean, but, clients but would phone up. Crazy. Clients would phone up and you couldn't, the music was so loud in the office. And I can't understand now how I dealt with those phone calls, because I can't do that now. Yeah. But then it was just like, hello, design the public. Like, <laughs> it was wonderful. I just make people go out, you know, now I just make people go outside if their phone goes. And they go, music's a bit like, don't stand outside. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but the number of times I answer the phone and they're like, are you in a club? Yeah. Are you at work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just yes, we're a number of times it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we got asked, I mean, in early interviews, got asked some really sort of, you know, dull questions. And, and I remember one of the first interviews we did with somebody from, um, I think it was Design Week. And they, they kind of said, oh, it's really great, you know, in, in a kind of, I'm trying so hard not to be patronising, but I'm not doing very well, you know, kind of way. But saying, well, you know, like, oh, it's so good that you're doing what you're doing in the North and you're not just doing it in London. And their last question, is one more question. That, so, so where do you get your design supplies? I mean, do you have to come to London to get them? <laughs> and, but, but in but the, the mid-80s, that was how it was. <laughs> there was very, very, very there, there, there weren't many design companies, mm. you know, out, outside London that were doing anything mm. worth doing other than, other than servicing, like, local clients and mm. things. And, and so, you know, and then there was, and I spoke to someone that, when we were doing uh, some work with a, uh, an artist signed to Warner Brothers, when they were based um, at the Electric Works or something in, in King Kensington, you know, and she, and, and she said, "Oh, I think I think it's great, and we love working with people from outside London." I said, "Well, who who is that?" And she said, "Well, it's you, really." She said, "I mean, but, but, but we feel the same, and we we were we were based in uh, in the West End, and we've moved out to Kensington. <laughs> you know, it's just it just it's a bizarre thing. So mm -hmm. so in some ways the the." The anti-London thing was was as much a response to kind of you know that oh it's grim up north and that it's just mm. you know, not half as grim as it is down your end. Mm. I didn't get I didn't get the sort of the sort of being up north as a as a thing within Zanzibar Republic. I always just thought it was more about and, and obviously I've just moved back up north and I think what I found really interesting is people are now obviously doing really interesting stuff. And they've been for years like everybody here. Um, but I feel that people are just getting on with it and that's what I really enjoyed mm. about um, Science Republic is we were just literally getting on with it and, and, mm. and because at that point I'd only lived down in London for a year or something like that before moving back up again I just didn't really, I didn't really get the sort of anti-London anti, anti -London thing at all I think it was just what was great about Science Republic was 
that we're just getting on with it and doing incredible, incredible work. And yes, you didn't have some knob from London or record label, you know, over your shoulder whilst you're doing something. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? That yeah. was like yeah. a, that, a huge advantage. You knew that they'd never <laughs> have the bollocks to come yeah. all the way up here. Yeah. Yeah. That, it did yeah, enable us to get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. It did help us get on with it. Yeah. The fact there was no parties to go to, yeah. Yeah. you know, and all that. No private, uh, no private views of it. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> make your own entertainment. By the mid nineties, though, I think by the mid nineties, pretty much all our work was from London anyway, wasn't yeah, it? It's just we didn't have to, have to go there abroad. and do it. And, mm. and when we started working more abroad, they all assumed we were in London anyway. Yeah. We, we were exactly. getting work with, you know, Psygnosis who were in Liverpool, weren't they? Yeah. I mean, so we were being up north geographically, yeah. obviously picked from mm. all over the country, mm. as well as further afield. Mm. But I think that the, the idea of it being anti sort of southern or whatever you want to call it, or proudly north, it was just that we were in the north, mm. and then the amount of questions like you may have asked us, <laughs> yeah. created that, and we fed off it a little yeah. bit and said, yeah, let's, let's, do some, let's do a poster without it. Mm. And, then, and then that kind of started to evolve a little bit on its own. Plus we had the seed that had already been sown mm. with the Socialist Republic of South Yorkshire, mm. and that we take, that the, you know, Ian had created this mm. company based around that ethos of being mm. drawing upon it and yeah. re, re Do you think it would have worked as if we were in Cornwall? <laughs> <laughs> South of nowhere. So my accent <laughs> 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 <laughs>